Hi fifth graders, welcome to lesson 3.6, decimal subtraction. The essential question for this lesson is, how can you use base 10 blocks to model decimal subtraction? Now, go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbooks to lesson 3.6, found on page 63, and let's get started. Now, let's take a look at question number one. As you can see, question number one has already been completed for us, but it's a good model for how to solve a decimal subtraction problem by drawing a quick picture. For question one, they give us the problem 7 tenths minus 2 tenths. And our job is going to be to draw a quick picture to solve that decimal subtraction problem. So our first step is to model that first number. And once again, that first number is 7 tenths. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw seven of the sticks, which represent the longs. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have now modeled that seven tenths. Now the problem is seven tenths minus two tenths. Now our next step is to model the number being subtracted, which is two tenths, by removing two of those longs. So we're going to take one, two of those away, and now I need to see what we have left. So if I take those two tenths away, I'm left with one, two, three, four, five tenths. So what I know is seven tenths minus two tenths equals five tenths. Now let's take a look at question number two. Our job is to subtract, draw a quick picture. For question two, they give us 45 hundredths minus 24 hundredths. Now, once again, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to model the first number. So that first number, once again, is 45 hundredths. And what I notice is I have a four in the tenths place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw four of the sticks because those represent the tenths. So one, two, three, four, and then I also notice that I have a five in the hundredths place. So I'm now going to draw five of those little circles and that represents my five in the hundredths place. So here's one, two, three, four, five. Now the problem is 45 hundredths minus 24 hundredths. So I now have to model the number being subtracted by removing the 24 hundredths. So I'm going to start with my 4 in the hundredths place first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 4 of my hundredths away. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to take those away. Now I also have that 2 in the tenths place. So I have to take 2 of these tenths away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one, two of those tenths away, and they're going to be gone. Now let's go back and take a look at what we have left. I have one hundredth that's left, so I'm going to write down a one in the hundredths place. And I also notice that I have two of my tenths left, so I'm going to write down a two in the tenths place. And remember, my decimal always falls in front of the tenths, and I don't have any ones, so what I know is this. I know that 45 hundredths minus 24 hundredths is going to leave me with 21 hundredths. So I'm going to write down 21 hundredths as my answer, and we have now subtracted by drawing a quick picture. Now, let's take a look at question number six. Once again, our job is to subtract, draw a quick picture. Well, for question six, they give us three and twenty-five hundredths minus one and sixty-seven hundredths. Now, I'm going to start out, and I'm going to, first of all, model this first number that's given. So I have, once again, three and twenty-five hundredths. And what I know is, is that I have a three in the ones place. So in order to model that three in the ones place, I'm going to draw three of those squares because those represent the ones. So here's one, here's two, and here's three. So that represents the three in the ones place. Now what I also notice is, is that I have a two in the tenths place. 
So I'm now going to draw two of those sticks, and that represents my two tenths. Now I also have a five in the hundredths place. So I'm going to draw five of those little circles, and that will represent my five in my hundredths place. So here's one, two, three, four, five. Now my next step is to model the number being subtracted by starting to take things away. So I'm taking away 1 and 67 hundredths. So I'm going to look first of all at that 7 in the hundredths place. And what I know is I can't take 7 hundredths away from my 5 hundredths. So what I'm going to have to do is, is I'm going to have to regroup one of my tenths. So I'm going to take one of my tenths right here and I'm going to now regroup that as 10 hundredths. So I'm now going to turn that into, and we'll just draw it right over here, I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 hundredths. Now, at this point, I'm able to take my 7 hundredths away from this group. So I'm now going to go ahead and take away seven of those hundredths. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to take those away. Now what I know is, is that I'm now left with, and let's make a count, I'm left with the five hundredths here and three hundredths here. So I know that what I have now is I have eight hundredths. So I'm going to go ahead and write down an 8 in my hundredths place. Now I'm going to focus on the tenths. And my job is to take 6 tenths away. Well I can't take 6 tenths away from just the 1 tenth that's left, so I'm going to have to once again regroup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to regroup one of the ones. So what happens is I'm going to take this one right here and regroup now, that 1 becomes 10 tenths. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, I know that I can now take 6 tenths away. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we're going to take 6 tenths away. So here are 5 of those tenths. Then I'm going to take just one more, and we're going to take those away. So now we're going to count to see how many of our tenths we have left. Well I have the one tenth here and I have four tenths left here so that means I have five tenths that are left. So I'm going to go ahead and write down a five in the tenths place. Now remember the decimal always goes in between the ones and the tenths. Now I'm going to focus on this one in the ones place. So I now have to take one away from the two ones that are left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take one of these away and what that leaves me with is it leaves me with one one. So I'm going to write down a one in the ones place. So what I know is when I take and subtract three and twenty-five hundredths minus one and sixty-seven hundredths I'm left with one and 58 hundredths. Now let's take a look at question number eight. Our job is to subtract, draw a quick picture, and for question eight they give us three and twelve hundredths minus two and fifty two hundredths. Well the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to model the first number that's given. So I have three and twelve hundredths. Well what I notice is, is that I have a three in the ones place. So I'm going to draw three of those squares to represent my three in the ones place. So here's one, two, three of the squares. And once again, those three squares represent my three in the ones place. Now next, I notice that I have a one in the tenths place. So I'm going to draw one of those sticks and that represents my one in the tenths place. Now I also have a two in the hundredths place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two of those circles. So here's one, two, and those two circles represent my two in the hundredths place. Now I have to model the number being subtracted. 
That number is 2 and 52 hundredths. Well, I'm going to start by working with my hundredths first, and what I notice is I have a 2 in the hundredths place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2 of those hundredths away. So I'm going to take those 2, and they're now going to be taken away. Now what I notice is I don't have anything left in the hundredths place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down a 0 to represent my hundredths. Now my next step is to look at the number that I have in the tenths place, and I have a 5 in the tenths place. Well, what I know is I can't take 5 tenths away from 1 tenth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to regroup using my 1's. So I'm going to take one of my 1's and I'm going to regroup. So here's one of the 1's. And when I regroup that, what happens is that becomes 10 tenths. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now that I've regrouped, I'm going to go ahead and take 5 of those tenths away. So I'm going to show you taking 5 of those tenths away. So here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tenths being taken away. Now we need to make a count and see how many of our tenths we have left. Well, I have one tenth here, and I have five tenths here, and I know that one plus five is going to give me six. So I'm going to write down a six in the tenths place. Now remember, the decimal always falls in between the tenths and the ones place. Now I'm going to focus on this two in the ones place. So what I know is I now need to take two ones away. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take two of those ones away. So here's one, two, and we're taking those away. So we now have zero ones that are left. So I'm going to write down a zero in the ones place. So I know that if I have three and twelve hundredths minus two and fifty-two hundredths, my answer turns out to be 60 hundredths. So I'm going to go ahead and write down my 60 hundredths. Now, as you can see, there's a second line here. And what I want to point out is this. I could write my answer as 60 hundredths, or I could also write my answer as 6 tenths. And what I know is these two decimals are equivalent to each other. That means they're equal to each other. And they're both acceptable ways to write our answer. Now, let's take a look at question number 10. It's one of our real-world problem-solving questions, and number 10 says, Yelena made a training plan to run 5 and 6 tenths miles per day. So far, she has run 3 and 1 tenth miles today. How much farther does she have to run to meet her goal for today? Well, what I know is this. I know that she made the plan to run 5 and 6 tenths miles per day. And I know that so far she has run three and one tenth miles today. The question says, how much farther does she have to run to meet her goal? Well, I know that when I see the phrase, how much farther, those are key words to represent subtraction. So my problem becomes five and six tenths minus three and one tenth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a quick picture to solve this problem. Well, I know that I have a 5 in the 1's place. So I'm going to draw 5 of those squares to represent that 5 in the 1's place. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So once again, that represents our 5 in the 1's place. And then I also have a 6 in the 10's place. So I'm now going to draw six of those sticks to represent the six in the tenths place. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six. And that once again represents our six in the tenths place. Now from that I'm going to have to take away three and one tenths. So I'm going to start out first of all looking at that one in the tenths place. I know that I have to take one of those tenths away. So I'm going to start right over here and I'm going to take one of those tenths away. Now what I know is this. If I take one tenth away from those six tenths, I'm left with five tenths. So I'm going to write down a five in my tenths place. 
Now remember, your decimal always falls in between the tenths and the ones place. Now I'm going to look at that 3 in the 1's place, and what I know is I have to take 3 of my 1's away. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take 1, 2, 3 of those 1's away. And when I take 3 of those 1's away, what I'm left with is 1, 2 of those 1's. So I'm going to write down a 2 in the 1's place. So what I know is 5 and 6 tenths minus 3 and 1 tenth is going to equal 2 and 5 tenths. So I'm going to write down my 2 and 5 tenths, and it should be 2 and 5 tenths miles, and that completes our answer. Now, let's take a look at question number 11. It's another one of our real-world problem-solving questions, and number 11 says, Tim cut a 2 and 3 tenths foot length of pipe from a pipe that was 4 and 1 tenth feet long. How long is the remaining piece of pipe? Well, what I know is this. I know, first of all, that Tim cut a 2 and 3 tenths foot length of the pipe. And he cut that from a pipe that was 4 and 1 tenth feet long. It said, how long is the remaining piece of pipe? So what I know is, I'm going to have to take that pipe that was originally 4 and 1 tenth feet long, and from that we're cutting a 2 and 3 tenths foot length off of that pipe. So my problem becomes 4 and 1 tenth minus 2 and 3 tenths. Now I'm going to draw a quick picture to model that subtraction. Well, What I notice is with that first number, I have a 4 in the 1's place. So I'm going to draw 4 of those squares to represent that 4 in the 1's place. So here's 1, 2, 3, four. And once again, those four represent the four in the ones place. Now I also notice that I have a one in the tenths place. So I'm going to draw one of those sticks and that represents the one in the tenths place. Now I have to model the number being subtracted. So I have to now take two and three tenths away. Well what I know is I can't take three tenths away from one tenth. So I'm going to have to regroup one of my 1's. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take one of those 1's and I'm going to regroup that as 10 tenths. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now what I know is I can now take 3 tenths away. So I'm going to go ahead and take three of those tenths away. So here's one, two, three, and I'm going to take those three tenths away. Now what I know is I have the one tenth here, five tenths here, so that's six, and then two tenths left here, so that's going to be eight of my tenths. So I'm going to write down an eight in the tenths place. Now. I remember once again that my decimal goes in between the tenths and the ones place. Now I'm going to focus on this two in the ones place. So what I know is is that I have to take two of these ones away. So here's one, two that I'm going to take away. So that leaves me with one, one. So I'm going to write down a one in the ones place. So what happens is four and one tenth minus 2 and 3 tenths becomes 1 and 8 tenths. And that becomes the answer to our problem. Now, let's take a look at our homework questions for tonight. You need to complete question number 1 and question number 2, as well as numbers 3 through 6, found in your Go Math workbook on page 64. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page I want you to let me know, do you feel like you're number one a novice, number two an apprentice, number three a practitioner, or number four an expert? Don't forget, your homework questions for tonight are number one and number two, along with numbers three through six, found in your Go Math workbook on page 64. I hope you have a great evening and we look forward to seeing you at school tomorrow.